Good morning to all. Welcome to my channel, Tony's Tutorial. And today we are going to discuss something else from the FEMA, the Hip Complex Biomechanics chapter that is known as the Angle of Inclination of FEMA. So when you discuss about Angle of Inclination, something that comes into mind is Angle of Inclination of the Humerus. And you imagine that, uh, just think that femur and the humerus has head, neck, greater trochanter, lesser trochanter for that, greater tubercle, lesser tubercle, and shaft. So they will be having similar angle of inclination and angle of torsion. But our topic of interest is uh, femur rather than humerus. So let us focus on hum femur. Always it comes humerus. It doesn't matter. And my dear students, you have to understand that don't study this for the examination point of view because in your clinical practice there is a greater chance that you come into conditions where you have to know about the angle of inclination especially in pediatric conditions especially in some pathological conditions like fracture and especially if you are going to have rehabilitation gait rehabilitation this is important so study this for the lifetime angle of inclination and I promise you it is simple, provided you understand the concept. So let us see what is angle of inclination. It is an angle, clear? Okay. Now there is an axis that passes through the head of the femur and neck of the femur. There is a line or axis, axis or line, passing through the center of the head and center of the neck. Okay. And there is another line which every long bone has known as the longitudinal axis. We have latitude and latitude like this and this is the longitude, straight lines. So the longitudinal axis on the line that is parallel to the shaft. So there is two axes, one name is the ankle, sorry, axis passing through the head and neck and another one is axis passing through the shaft of the femur. Clear? So this, just keep it in mind. Now what is angle of inclination? It is an angle formed between an axis through the head and neck and an axis through the shaft. Or it is an angle formed between an axis through the head and neck and the longitudinal axis of the femur. This is the angle. Clear? So once again I will tell you an axis passing through an angle formed between an axis passing through the head and neck and an axis passing through the shaft or the longitudinal axis of the femur that is known as angle of inclination it's all about that just have to remember always in mind head and neck and longitudinal axis and since it is an axis it has a value and that value is 125 degree the normal value of angle of inclination is 125 degree okay and now it can have a variation between 110 to 144 degree. It can have a variation between 110 to 144. Some features of angle of inclination. Features. First one. Normal angle is 125 degree. It can have a variation, as I told you, 110 to 144 degree. Third one, variations. What do you mean by variation? Two type of variation. One is between individuals. For a person like me, my angle of inclination will be 124 degree or 123 degree. For the next person standing near me, it can have a slight variation. So the variation between persons, between individuals. Okay. And for me itself, my right leg can have one angle of inclination and right leg may have another within the person. So variation within the person. Yes, absolutely right. So variation between individuals and variation between within the person can be seen. The fourth one, it is lesser in females lesser in females compared to men because of the wider pelvis the pelvis is wider so the angle of inclination can decrease or it is naturally decreased fifth one it can decrease by age 
decrease by age. That means by birth it may be 150 degree and decreases to normal 125 by maturity. Maturity. Okay, whatever it is. So that is, so normally when a person is, when a small child, his angle of inclination may be higher, like 150 degree. So once skeletal maturity comes and body starts fusing, 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 and by skeletal maturity, it comes to the normal value of 125 degree. Clear? Okay? So, once again, let us examine the features. The first one, that is normal value, 125. Second one, variation of how many degree? 110 degree to 144 degree. Third one, variation exists between individuals and within the individuals. Fourth one, it can decrease in females because of the wider phases. Fifth one, it can decrease by age, 150 degree, maybe in the child, and decreases by skeletal maturity. And sixth one, two conditions. Increase in angle is known as coxa valga. And seventh one, decrease in angle is known as coxa vara. Okay, so seven features. Increase in the angle is known as coxa valga and decrease in the angle is known as coxa vara. Before rubbing, let us just once more revise it. Normal angle 125, variation 110 to 144. Variation can be between the individuals and within the person. Decreases in females because of why, what? Why the pelvis? And decreases by birth, oh sorry, by decreases by age. Birth may be 150, decreases to 125 by age. Increase in angle is known as coxa valga, and decrease in angle is known as coxa valga. Let me rub it. Uh, this is a bit tough to rub. Maybe I will have one another board in short time. <laughs> okay. Let me rub it. Yes. By the time, let's revise what we have learned so far. Now, we want to focus into the two conditions. One is increase in the angulation coxa valga. What is coxa valga? This is a new time, but it's not. Okay, why? What is coxa valga? So we should draw this diagram like this. Okay, this one, this one, like this. You have the longitudinal axis here, they have it. In coxa valga, what happens is that the head will be like this, neck would be over here, the some things would be here. So what happens is that this angle increases. That angle increases. Actually, the greater the color would remain the same, that's okay. So the angle increases. Once again, let me clearly explain to you. Coxa valga is a condition in which the angle of inclination increases. Coxa valga is a condition in which the angle of inclination of the femur increases or the angle between longitude line, longitudinal axis and line passing through head and neck will be increased. How many? How much it can increase? 200? No, no. It will increase greater than 125 degree. And greater than 125 is characterized as coxa valga. So coxa valga is a condition in which the angle of inclination increases. Okay, that's it. Angle of inclination increases. But, um, but, 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 in body, any single change, any structural or biomechanical changes can result in lot of different problems in the body. So what happens in coxa valga? Coxa valga, there is angle greater than 125 degree. In coxa valga, the following changes do take place. For example, this is the articulation of the hip bone. Okay. Now imagine this head of the femur, head of the femur, comes up like this. So I cannot pick pick it up and put it here, put here. So I'm just tilting this one. So head comes like this. But the acetabulum remains same. What happens? Can you note any peculiarity? The earlier it was like this. Later it becomes like this. See, a large portion of the femur head comes out of the acetabulum. That is. The articular surface comes out of the acetabulum 
the contact between fat of the femur and acetabulum decreases. What happens? Decrease in stability. Decrease in stability. You can guess it. Why? Articular surface, articular surface, contact area decreases. See, head of the femur. The problem is here, the head of the femurs, the spear, 2 by 3rd of the spear actually comes in contact, but here it does not come, a large portion remains outside. Because the femur itself is tilted upwards, the head is tilted upwards. Acetabulum cannot go with it like this upwards. Like our scapula can move, but acetabulum cannot, because it's fixed over here. So no much changes. So the articular surface, large area can be exposed. That can lead to instability. Second one. Just let me write down trabecular system density decreases. Density decreases. See, or you know that uh, later in this chapter we study in the neck there are a lot of trabeculas. These trabeculas are something like a lines of bond formation, lamellar bonds line formation just understand it a bone formation line okay so this line of bone formation is actually giving the strength to the bone so what happens here is see the head is here now okay the head is here but head will tilt upwards so let this pen show the head down it will tilt upwards so naturally here the weight is transmitted like this this angle but here the weight is transmitted straight straight like this okay so what happens weight transmission line changes and we have studied that structural changes or structural imposed demands lead to bone formation and structural um, and soft tissue formation in the body that is body's peculiarity when there is imposed demand only there will be positive changes so here what uh, the uh, line of the weight bearing gradually shifts to a wrong position and that becomes vertical so this Trabecular system, the lateral and the oblique trabecular system, trabeculars that are lying obliquely will get damaged or their density decrease because there is less demand, less stress. Stress is less, the density is less. So the density of the trabecular system decrease ultimately lead to weakness of the bone, weakness of neck of femur or bone. Okay. That's the second thing. First one, in decreasing stability due to articular surface problem. Second one, trabecular system density decreases and it can lead to weakness of the neck and femur, neck of the femur. Okay. Now, third one, something about momentum of abductors. See, you just look at the speaker. This is how the bond is. So, you know, this is orientation is different, but let me keep it like this. So. Here is the abductor muscle. Let this pen show the abductor. This is the abductor compartment. This is the abductor. This is the flexor. This is extensor compartment. So this is the flexor. This is extensor compartment. Whatever it is. This is abductor. This is abductor compartment. This abductor compartment. This is the abductor muscle. So this is the distance from its joint like this, say 5 centimeter. What happens is that this is the momentum. Okay, this will give a momentum. Now the head is tilted upwards. Tilt, tilted upwards. This momentum decreases what happens is the momentum is decreased what happens is momentum this is 5 centimeter momentum becomes a 3 centimeter and plus the head itself moves upward when head is moved upward the distance between head and the greater trochanter decreases and ultimately the momentum of the abductor muscle decreases if momentum is decreased muscular efficiency is decreased and lead to muscular weakness See, what all of the things are in a small change in the angle and it's going to pro create problem like this. So this is the normal momentum, 5 cm and when the head tilts upward, it decreases to 3 cm for example, like this, something like that. So naturally the momentum decreases. Once the momentum decreases, the efficiency of the muscle is decreased. And the efficiency of the muscle is decreased, what happens? There is problem with the balance and stability. See? And the fourth thing, is and the fourth thing is gravitational attraction moment 
Momentum, not momentum, moment is unbalanced. Is unbalanced. See, for example, that happens in single instance. Single instance means you are standing in one leg. I can stand in one leg like this without any support, any number of time because my objectives are strong. The gravity is providing an adduction moment, collapse, collapse, collapse. But my objectives are working. No, 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 I will not collapse and not collapse and not let him collapse. But you ask your grandfather to stand like this, he will fall. You ask your small child to stand, he will fall. You ask your better temptation to stand, he will fall. That is because the abduction moment will be decreased in them. The abductor muscle is weak. See, here there is an adduction moment. Always gravity is providing an adduction moment. Because the tendency is adduction, okay? But this abductors are working every time. No, I will not allow it for this abductors. But what happens here? Abductors are weak. So this adduction moment is not balanced. So there is a chance for fall. So gravitational adduction moment is unbalanced and lead to instability. See dear students, what would have happened? Instability, muscular weakness, bone weakness, and all these changes happens due to what? Coxalaga. Once again, decrease instability due to articular surface. Bone contact is less. Trabecular system density decrease bone weakness. Momentum of the abductor muscle, this side muscle, so lateral side muscles, decreases. Muscular efficiency is decreased. Gravitational adduction moment is unbalanced. That leads to stability problems. And last one, fifth one. Fifth one is, you see, we have the hip joint like this. Actually, these abductor muscles are pulling from here. And all the muscles are balanced in such a manner, this bone to bone contact is less. Or joint reaction force, force from up, force from down is less. But when muscles are weak, this joint reaction force increases, bone to bone contact increases. There may be damage to the labrum, there may be damage to the articular cartilage, there may be many problems. So the last point is joint reaction force increases. Joint reaction force increases lead to degenerative changes degenerative changes see the last change so the muscles are working like this to keep the uh, hip in a balanced position but abductor muscle weakness is there so this due to this weakness and the problems associated with that joint the reaction force force exerted in the joint against the force against the normal force or weight increases and naturally what happens Joint reaction force increase, degenerative changes happens. So all these things are going to pro provide or result in following things. Decrease in stability. Okay. Decrease in muscle strength. Third one, decrease in muscle efficiency. Fourth one, joint reaction force increases. Fifth one, degenerative changes. Degenerative changes. What are the degenerative changes? Maybe impingement, impingement or labral tear, labral tear. I will explain that. So the conditions are or the result are leads to instability in the joint leads to decrease in muscle strength in the joint, leads to decrease muscular efficiency, increases the joint reaction force, ultimately lead to degenerative changes like impingement, impingement, comes in contact or problem, pain. Or this labor may get compressed and can lead to labor problem. So ultimately, lot and lot of problems due to coxa valga. And one more thing, this is the normal orientation it comes like this so the length of the femur itself will change so length of the femur may be a bit higher in coxa case so these are the triads of events or these are the series of events that happens in coxa valga let me summarize coxa valga is a condition in which this angle is increased greater than 125 degree and it leads to various problem one by one you have to think remember it's like a flow chart and it leads to the problems like instability, decrease in muscle strength, decrease in muscle efficiency, joint reaction force increase, degenerative changes, 
like impingement as a tabular labor tear or at least it comes into my mind clean out labor clean out labor it's not clean out labor it is as a tabular labor tear etc that's all about coxa vita and the next thing is very very simple very very simple that is coxa vita see this is the humor normal angulation okay this is normal what happens in coxa when the head comes like this see this is axis angle decrease so in coxa valga is a condition in which the angle of inclination of the femur decreases or it is a pathological condition in which the angle of inclination of the femur decreases clear coxa vara is a condition in which the angle of inclination of the femur decreases how much it decreases 100 now 90 now no it decreases less than 120 degree it decreases less than 120 degree that is coxa vara it is a condition in which the angle of inclination of the femur decreases but if somebody asks you what is angle of uh, what is coxa vara don't write angle of inclination decrease how to write angle of inclination decrease where angle of inclination is an angle formed between axis of the femur passing through head and neck and the longitudinal I have to explain it like this okay. now what happens in coxa vara coxa vara we saw a lot of things is there any changes in coxa vara positive change <laughs> that is increase in stability increase in muscle strength increase in muscle efficiency decrease in joint reaction force don't worry I'll explain it like one by one decrease increase in stability you see this is the head of femur okay this is normal this much contact in coxa valga contact will decrease in coxa valga femur is oriented like this more part of the femur goes into the acetabulum more part of the femur goes into the femur the head there is nothing to see outside so naturally what happens the stability increase but this 120 is that if it is decreased too much it is causing prolonged instability arise but if it is a normal decrease like a 120 degree it increases the stability of the femur because you see this is a normal this is abnormal this is see this one not and not complete part of the femur is combined in contact with the acetabulum so increases the joint stability increase in muscle strength how the head moves up raised to kind of moves up down uh, this much so the momentum increase and momentum increase abductor muscle strength increase if abductor muscle strength increase abductor muscle efficiency increase and decrease in joint reaction first so the muscles are stronger there is more, more bond to, there is more stability in the joint. So the joint reaction force is balanced. So joint reaction force decreases. So much degenerative changes are not seen in coxa vara. See, but if it is decreasing too much, there is problem. That's not what we are considering. So in normal case, in coxa vara, there is increased stability, there is increased muscle strength, there is increased muscle efficiency, and increased joint reaction force. And what, um, as I told you earlier, any change in the body can produce problem. But like, is this change only producing positive problems? It should not be like that. There may be some negative problems. The negative thing is, see, there is a concept like bending moment of the joint or bone. So what happens is that this femur angulation changes. The head comes like this. So the bending moment that exists in this bone increases. So what happens bending moment increase? There is a chance of fracture of the neck. So head is coming out like this. So the distance increase or the bending moment increase. So there is a chance of fracture of the neck. So the negative is only increase in bending moment. Bending moment. And this increased bending moment can lead to fracture of neck. Fracture of the neck. That is only negative thing. That is significant. Once again. So the head comes here, so the naturally, this is the orientation. So this oblique 
obliquity decreases so the bending moment that exists in the bone in the neck increases and there is a chance of fracture of the neck so fracture of the neck is more common if there is coxa vara in second vision man that's all about coxa vara and we have to discuss one more thing there are three classification of coxa vara one is congenital coxa vara second one it is a developmental coxa vara developmental third one it is acquired coxa vara developmental okay congenital means it is present by birth the person is having the child is having by birth itself that is congenital coxa vara coxa vara present by birth congenital developmental see after birth during the process of bone maturity the bone comes to fuse so there is a problem in that developmental phase that leads to developmental coxa vara and acquired in some disease like the rickets vitamin b12 deficiency vitamin d deficiency calcium deficiency etc so in those conditions acquired coxa vara can develop so three types of coxa vara congenital present by birth developmental developed during the stages of bone formation or bone fusing third one acquired due to some disease like rickets or vitamin deficiency etc clear that are the classification of coxa vara once again congenital developmental and acquired congenital developmental and acquired clear okay so as i told you in coxa valga this comes upward so the length increases in coxa vara it comes downward so length of the femur itself decreases you know this is the head this becomes head so the total length becomes less so what happens the person may walk with the limping the person may have limping okay that is length leg length variation may be exist in between both legs clear so these are the changes that happens in coxa vara and coxa valga valga negative changes vara almost positive changes except neck fracture chances so this neck fracture can lead to a condition known as sorry this bending moment can lead to condition known as slipped capital femur epiphysis s c p e don't worry we will study this later next we are going to study about slipped this capital head of the femur slips or a slipped capital femur femur epiphysis so the during the bone formation time in coxa vara it can result in slipping of this head of the femur or the capitulum so the capitulum or that is the head so and it can result in a condition on a slipped capital femur epiphysis don't worry next video is about that we'll discuss that so let us summarize angle of inclination what is its normal value two conditions coxa vara and valga decrease increase and decrease uh, valga is almost negative changes vara is positive changes except um, fracture and chance of slipped capital femoral s f one right? it's f slipped capital femoral epiphysis not p f slipped capital femoral epiphysis clear and stay tuned for the next video that will be on slipped capital femoral epiphysis angle of torsion and various other pathological changes that we see around the hip joint by the time just revise the thing and be happy thank you